Is this? What is a free man? Well, first, before you understand uh, what a free man is, you have to understand what your birth certificate is. What about the stories Freemen seem fond of telling? Robert Menard has one, a tale of a hunter approached by a parks warden because he didn't have a license for his gun. There was a hunter. He was out hunting for sustenance. A conservation officer came by, asked him for a license. He said, I don't have one. He said, I'm taking your gun. But he said, that's okay. I got 12 more at home. The conservation officer says, well, every time I see you, I'm going to take your firearm. But he said, that'll work until you get the last one. Then you're only taking bullets. Just a story. Interpret it as you wish, he says. But some things need explaining. A letter Menard once sent to a police officer who pulled him over. He will pay dearly, he wrote. Just a figure of speech, he says. But what about this? One thing, but you could be lawfully shot and killed. Is that is that not I threatening a, a cop? If just because a cop is wearing a uniform doesn't mean they are incapable of breaking the law or engaging in actions which are clearly threatening to our very way of life. What I am doing here is giving them warning that this is what could happen if they don't actively learn the law better and start operating within their mandates. But how or rather, within the law as Freeman sees it. The vast majority are peaceful, may not ever act out against anyone, and most are insulted by the suggestion there might be danger ahead. They worry so much about how the movement will be portrayed. Robert Menard had two cameramen shooting us, shooting this interview. Yeah, and the thing is, when, when the one bad guy gets a lot of press and then everyone gets labeled as that, but what you don't see are the hundreds and hundreds of people who haven't done that, who are using, you know, love. So you're not a dangerous guy? I'm a sweetheart. Of course I'm not a dangerous guy. Back in North Bay, the man who considers himself a victim of the Freeman, once a follower who, like many now, paid with a lost reputation and criminal charges and financial ruin. For him, Menard as sweetheart is hard to swallow. Yeah, yeah, sure, a sweetheart. Affecting people mentally is more dangerous than going up and physically pushing them. Now, and you got a few people saying this is cool, it'll convince a few others, convince a few others. And it snowballs. And where does it end? Bob Podert says his mind leaps to the worst possible scenario, and it scares him. Pay attention, Canada, he urges. Don't dismiss the freemen as the Americans once did the sovereigns. You know, I just hate to see that, the, you know, as I said, I wish they could learn from where our mistakes and see where we are. We have been where Canada is now. And where he is now, it seems, is utterly driven. A man who will not give up his fight, even though he has already lost. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Springfield, Missouri. Well, Adrian's back in studio tonight. Your report raises a couple of key mm -hmm. questions, and we want to get to them in a moment. First, a quick break, then back with more on this story. Back now with Adrian and more on her investigation into the Freeman on the land. You know, we said that some people are clearly worried about the threat they may pose here in Canada. How worried are police sounding about this? It's difficult to say. You know, I've spoken with a lot of Freeman over the course of, of the last little while, particularly with Rob, Robert Menard at length. I am certain that he would emphasize, look, this movement is not the same as the movement in the United States. It's more left-wing here, it's more peaceful, not hostile, maybe doesn't have the same violent potential as the American wing. And there are police officers who would agree with that 100%. So it's important not to exaggerate the risk. It's also important to know that, nonetheless, police are doing a lot of training here, as are officers of the court, in how to understand the Freeman, how to recognize this language, this business of I'm not driving, I'm traveling, how to diffuse these encounters so this, they don't end up in confrontations as best as possible. We know that the U.S. Marshals are spending a lot of time talking with Canadian police. There's a lot of cross-border training because there is a lot of cross-border movement with this philosophy. What are they most concerned about, please? 
you get the sense at the moment that what they're really worried about in the present is that perhaps well-meaning Canadians will get so wrapped up that they act out in extreme ways and end up in jail or in a state of financial ruin. There have been serious prosecutions for, for people who have acted on this and ended up uh, you know, using it as a tax evasion scheme or squatting on land and ending up with you know, serious repercussions. So that's a key concern. They keep hearing, you will keep hearing Freeman say, hey, it works, we have uh, great examples of success, and almost every time you'll hear the police say, well, no, you're likely going to get caught, and it will likely cost you. It's quite a report. Thanks, Adrian.